Shalom Aleichem to all my holy brothers and sisters here in central Queens. Tomorrow is the holiday of Tanit Esther, which leads into Purim. Even though tomorrow is a fast day, the uh, evening of Tanis Esther is uh, perhaps the greatest celebration on the Jewish calendar. And this is because it's the holiday of Purim. Purim, obviously, uh, being a person with the name Mordechai is my favorite holiday right after Yom Kippur. But that's another conversation. And the holiday of Purim, of course, is a day where we have numerous mitzvahs. I just want to take a few short moments to speak of these. One of the most important mitzvahs of the day of Purim is Matanos Lev Yonim. This is where we give money or food to people that need. So go out and find a family or a friend or an organization and give tzedakah. That's number one. Number two, of course, is the mitzvah of Mishloach Manot. This is the mitzvah where we give at least one person two gifts that are respectable, a bottle of wine, and another food item, maybe hamantashen, or cake, or meat, or fish, or something else. Of course, today we have the tradition where we fill up bags with candies and all sorts of wonderful junk that we have to put away very soon because of the holiday of Pesach, but that's another story. Then, of course, after these two very important mitzvahs is the mitzvah of machzit ha-shekel, or zecher le machzit ha-shekel. We have a custom where we give the equivalent of a half of the common currency. In today's day and age, when we go to the synagogue, we go to shul, we lift up the coins that are uh, provided by the gabayim, by the synagogue, and we put a few dollars in the, uh, in the box or in the pushka, and we say, Zecher l'machzit ha-shekel. So if you have a few dollars at home, you could do this at home as well, even if you don't have the three half dollars, and you could say, Zecher l'machzit ha-shekel, and put it in a pushka, and this is uh, to commemorate, of course, the temple and pray that God should rebuild it very soon in our time. And then, of course, when you think about all three of these mitzvahs, helping the poor, sharing with your friends and neighbors, and the idea of uniting together as one by giving this uh, uh, nomination of money towards the temple, at least in commemoration and praying for the temple, these are all ideas that unite the Jewish people, both as individual human beings and as a nation, which of course survived the terrible decree of Haman and Achashverosh. And finally, the topic that I'd like to talk a little bit about is the idea of intoxication on Purim. It's a concept that's not spoken of a lot and it's really not explained in a way that is palatable by most people. Most people look at intoxication as something which is very dangerous. We call it the alcohol poisoning. But I'd like to explain something which is very, very important in that the concept of intoxication and Purim is very unique and very different. And I'll explain. You know, the term for intoxication on Purim is Ad Delo Yada, until you do not know. Bein Baruch Mordechai Ve'orer Hamon, that Mordechai is the one that should be blessed, and Orer Hamon, that Hamon should be cursed. And when you reach that point, that juncture, where you don't know the difference, you're totally oblivious, that's when you know you drank enough. That's the concept, and that's about as far as most people know. Easy is, easy does, Take out a bottle of wine, drink it up, and you'll get to that point. But in truth, we're all well aware, and especially now in many school systems, they're bringing a concept which is as old as the world, and definitely as old as Hasidic philosophy, and this is called mindfulness. Mindfulness means you should be poised. Mindfulness, you should be calm and collected, informed, intelligent, intellectual, to make the right decisions. In the world of psychology and in the world of uh, greater English, we have a term called executive function. Executive function means exactly that. You are the executive, you need to control this company, you are the person, the body is the company, and you need to, you need to control it. 
And many people like to be in control. They don't want to feel out of control. They don't like to take drugs. They don't like to take alcohol. They don't like to do things that are going to make them be out of control. They don't even want to have too much sugar or have an adrenaline rush because that'll take them out of their sense of executive function. And that is mindfulness. And it makes a lot of sense. A human being should be managing themselves. Makes absolute sense. Ultimately, we also say it's managing the ego, managing the senses, managing our character traits. That's executive function. After executive function, there is something called meta-mindfulness. Meta-mindfulness is a little bit deeper than executive function. It's not you're the supervisor, you're the active person on the front line actually managing the character traits, the senses, the decisions. So it's ego management hands-on. And this we could call simply meta-mindfulness. And then there's something which most people are not familiar with. And this is called supra-mindfulness. Adeloyada. That's what this means. Adeloyada means until I do not know. Supra-mindfulness. You see, the mind is a very, very beautiful place and a very beautiful thing. And human beings want to use the mind, utilize its tools and techniques and skills and control it. But the mind is limited. The mind is a creation and it has its parameters. So the mind could grasp up to this and then after that it just won't understand it, it won't grasp it, it cannot fathom it. That's called supra mindfulness. Executive function will be at a standstill and meta mindfulness will be at a standstill because supra mindfulness is outside of the mind. It's beyond the parameters and limitations of the mind, quite frankly. Adelo Yoda is a concept that has been talked about for over 2,000 years. Maybe not with the greater English that we present it today. This idea of supra mindfulness. But what it does is it tells the human being it's okay to let go. Put the executive functioning away for a few moments. Put the mental mindfulness away for a few moments. Allow the mind, the human totality, the human being to go outside of the mind. Surrender. Let go. Just a little bit for a short period of time. Adeloyada. And when you reach that point, stop. You see, that takes training. But if you've been doing it your whole life, or at least since your bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, then by the time you're 21, or by the time you're 40, or by the time you're 70, you got good at this. Or maybe in some Hasidic yeshivas where they have weekly farbrengans, and they do super mindfulness training, where every week they sit down with a little mashka, and they say, say l'chaim, and every Shabbos morning in shul, you say l'chaim, and any other given opportunity of holiday or super special day, you say l'chaim, you're training the mind, not an intoxication which makes you, God forbid, to have poisoning, but super mindfulness, which allows you to leave the mind and say it's okay to be loose. If you're dangerous when you drink, obviously you shouldn't drink or go for training. If, the, if alcohol for you is an allergy or some sort of adverse reaction, obviously this isn't for you. Just like if you don't like wine on Shabbos or wine is not good for you, you could make Kiddush on Chala. There are other ways to fulfill this mitzvah of Adelo Yod on Purim. But super mindfulness should not nor cannot be eradicated from Torah. This is what the Torah is telling us, explains the Hasidic masters and many of the halachic authorities. You need to go into this state of super mindfulness on the holiday of Purim. Because understanding God, understanding Jewish survivalism, will only be grasped fully in the state of super mindfulness. If you think that your mind is going to explain how God exists, how the human people the Jewish nation continue to exist considering all of the oppression, all of the pogroms, all of the inquisitions and holocausts. You think your mind, our simple brain, that little mush in our skulls is going to fully fathom God and all of his intricate details in the world are making a terrible mistake. This is the story of Purim going out of the box, going above and beyond the mind just for a short period of time to enable ourselves 
to say, I don't get it, but I get that I don't get it. And allow myself to just experience that in the state of supra mindfulness. Adelo Yoda. My holy brothers and sisters and friends, I encourage those who are capable of doing this. And maybe you haven't done it before. Do it safely. Maybe you need a guide. Maybe you need a coach. Maybe you need to do it slowly to train yourself into going out of your ego, out of your selfishness, out of your selfness, going out of yourself, out of your mind, which is always in control and stubborn, being an action. Go out of that state of mind. Go into the state of mind where say, maybe I need to surrender. Maybe I need to submit. Maybe I need to go and self-abnegate for just a few moments. And when you return, you'll say, wow, you know, maybe I entered into a state of super mindfulness that entertained feelings and thoughts and ideas that I needed to entertain in my life. This is the story of Purim. You know, the word Purim means lots. Lots means a girl. That means it's not about intellect. It's not about what you think you know or actually know. It's not about mindfulness. It's about totally relying on something beyond you. Haman threw lots to decide what day to destroy the Jewish people. And when did it fall out? On Moses' birthday and day of passing, which was a day of fortune for the Jewish people. The holiday is called the day of lots. What does that mean? That means it's not a day of intellect. It's a day of supra rationale. It's a day of supra mindfulness. If we want to experience in our most elated state, that's the way we do it, says the Talmud, says the halakhic authorities, explains the Hasidic masters. We do it by intoxicating ourselves just to the point where we could allow ourselves to let go of the executive function, where we could let go of the meta mindfulness and go into the state of supra mindfulness. We let go of the broker of the mind. We let go of the broker of the brain who always tries to make connections for us. And we say, okay, now it's time to take a rest. Now I'm going to just be the pintalid, the core Jew that connects directly to God. And just as we reunite with our fellow Jews when we give money to the poor and give gifts to our friends and give money towards the community temple in Matanus Lev Yonim and Mishloch Manot and Matzit Shekel. We connect with our fellow Jew above and beyond intellect. And ultimately, we connect with God above and beyond intellect. The whole year, we connect to Hashem with intellect, with mindfulness. And Purim, it's Adelo Yada. It's the level of connection to God, which is unbreakable. It's the level of connection to God that is unexplainable, intrinsic, quintessential. Connection between the Jew and God and the Jew and the fellow Jew and the nation of Israel and God. We will survive, we will persevere, we will thrive and we will prosper in the mind and outside the mind, in the heart and as a nation as a whole, one heart, one body connected to Hashem. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful holiday of Purim. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful month. I wish you success in all of areas of life, in the mind, in the heart, above the mind. And I wish you joy and happiness until the coming of Mashiach, where we will see that money that we put from Matzah Shekel to actual use, and we'll see the Kohen Gadol and the Beis Hamikdash together with Mashiach Tzedkenu, Meher Amen. Happy Purim, everyone.